praise the Lord. Let me just say good evening to those of you that are joining in this evening and to say how good it is to have you this evening in our Bible study. We are hailing out of uh, 89 Stroud Road. That's in Gloucester. And as I have always said, Gloucester is in the southwest of the United Kingdom. We are just across the M5 from Cheltenham. So we welcome you. Cheltenham is a famous race course where the Queen and all them usually attend and the people who are into horse racing. Um, I can't ride a horse, no, neither can I. Um, neither do I know anything about them, so I don't go over there, but it's not far from here. So okay, good to have you joining us this evening. I am. Um, you didn't request that bit, but I just thought I'd throw it in. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Tonight, I want to talk about how to handle objections. How to handle objections. And so, it's important because as Christians, when we go out there to meet people, we are talking to them and somehow they are putting objections to us. How they feel and when we talk to them about our faith, they are countering what we are saying. And it's great to know as a Christian what we should answer these people. We should know our Bibles. We should know everything. We should answer every question they are able to ask. And if we can't answer, we should also be willing to say to them, can we come back to you next week? Praise be to God. So how to handle objections. So the first point I'd like to take or start with tonight, someone you're talking to somebody about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We have seen a, a plethora of death because of the pandemic. And some of us have known people who were very close to us. Some of them were quite close and we've lost them. And the, when you're talking to people in the service or about the hope we have, it's easy for them to say, I don't believe in the resurrection. Um, do you, as a Christian, in the first place, believe in the resurrection? I remember when we were in Bible school, the principal um, was talking to us one day, and he said to us, we should reconcile ourselves with death before we even go out there and start to preach at a funeral service. Do you believe in the resurrection? You remember when Bishop Jenkins, a few years ago, the Bishop of Durham, many years ago, he told on the radio and he was interviewed on the BBC TV and other television programs. And he said, I don't believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's a load of conjuring tricks of bones and all of those things. And many people were stumbled because of what Bishop Jenkins, the Bishop of Darren, had to say. Some were calling for his resignation. Do you believe in Jesus' resurrection? Do you really believe it? Because 1 Corinthians chapter 50, 1 Corinthians chapter 50, this is what Paul said. And I, I think it's a beautiful, beautiful um, um, defense, apologetic of the, the, the gospel of Jesus Christ. He started off by saying, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and which in, in, in which, wherein you stand, by which also we are saved. If you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. In verse 3, he said, I deliver unto you first of all the, that which I received, how that Christ died for our sins, and according to the scriptures, and that he was bruised, and that he rose again. Check this out. He rose again the third day according to the scriptures, and that he was seen. Notice he was seen of Cephas and out of the twelve. After that, he was seen of above 500 brethren at one time, of whom the greater part unto this present they remain, but some are fallen asleep. In other words, some are dead. 
After that, he was seen of James, then of all the apostles. Last of all, he was seen of me also as one born of a due out of due time. Then he went on to say, glory to God, in verse 12, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some of you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. Yea, he said, furthermore, we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, who he raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not rise not for if the dead rise not then is not christ raised and if christ be not raised your faith is vain you are yet in your sins and those people who have fallen asleep in christ are perished then he went on to verse 19 if in this life only we have hope we are like all men most miserable do you believe in the christ resurrection glory to god how would you answer that? Any of you here tonight would want to answer, do you believe in the resurrection of the believers? How sure are you? What is the ground of your belief? Any of you? Praise be to God. Anyone want to say? Praise be to God. The yes. yes? Yeah, well, you know, I have the other, ev other evidence, the mm -hmm. Holy Spirit. The evidence of the Holy Spirit? Yes. Okay, and if I ask you what does that mean, what would you say to me? I would say that you know, um, if I found part of it to be true, mm -hmm. there's no reason for me to doubt the rest. Okay, if you found part of it to be true, there is no reason. And I have the evidence of it. You have the evidence. Okay, and your evidence is? I speak in a language that I have never learned. Mm -hmm. And you know, how did that happen? You know, uh, having got filled with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen. Which, you know, it is uh, it's not possible for for me to speak a language fluently mm -hmm. that I have never learned. Okay. All right. Except it be given to me by God. Except it be given to you by God. Would you actually say that every Christian experienced some form of resurrection in their lives? I would I would say yes. Janet. Yeah. You're close by Brother Jim, so if you take your mask off yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, go and say. Yes, I, I do. Mm -hmm. You have to speak up loud so that someone can hear you. Okay. Uh -huh. okay, yeah. um, would you agree that every Christian experiences resurrection in some form? Yeah, because when you become a Christian, mm -hmm. it's like your old life dies. You mm -hmm. become a new person, mm -hmm. so it's like a new you become a resurrected person mm -hmm. the real you comes comes out mm -hmm. of you if you know what i mean okay if that, if that's the right way mm -hmm. that's yeah, all right you you because the bible says that you're you rise with a newness of life mm -hmm. so that life and that experience that you have of being changed by becoming a christian mm -hmm. Nobody can argue with that because that's your personal experience. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's hard for somebody to to, to doubt mm -hmm. that you've had a, a true um, experience of being born again. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks very much. All right. I appreciate that answer. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1, any of you remember that verse? Yeah, you, you have to speak up a little louder, please. And you who were dead in trespasses, and you hath he quickened. Quicken, sorry. The word quicken. What does the word quicken mean? To make alive. Yeah. Make alive. Yeah. You hath he quickened. Who were what? Dead. dead. And you were dead, mummified in what? Trespasses and sins. Sin. Where in time past you walked according to the course of this world. Yeah. So every Christian experience some form of resurrection am i talking to you yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah um now in chapter 8 of romans chapter 8 of romans because if i'm going to be using the argument brother jim uses 
used earlier on, I would like also to match it up with Romans chapter 8. Any of you remember what Romans 8 said? There is therefore no, now no, no, no condemnation to mm -hmm. those who are in Christ Jesus. That's not the verse I no. want. It's pretty good, uh, but yeah. Praise God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, well, it, it says um, in verse 8, verse 9, but you are not in the flesh, but you are in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwells mm -hmm. in you. Yeah. If any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none, none of his. Mm -hmm. And if Christ mm -hmm. be in you, the body mm -hmm. is dead, dead because, because of sin, sin but the but spirit, the spirit of life, life because, because of the spirit is life, life because of righteousness. righteousness. And verse mm -hmm. 11, if the spirit of him that mm -hmm. raised up Jesus, Jesus from Christ the from the dead, well, he knew. So the Christian believes in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It is that resurrection by which we have hope. Amen. Amen. And if the spirit that raised the spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead, he dwells in our hearts. Amen. Amen. So David also, you remember that verse, that passage where he said, He brought me out of the miry clay. He put my feet on a rock to stay. He put a song in my mouth. So the Christian actually experienced resurrection. Why? Because they were dead in sin. They were dead. From the moment you're disconnected to God, you're dead. You're just dead. You may be walking, you may be dancing, you may have money, you may can build and do all sorts, but spiritually you're dead. You're, you, when a man is dead, physically he's dead to the world. All around him, no matter what you say, all the beautiful things you said about him at the funeral and all those big granddad things that you give him at the graveside flower and wreath and grandma and hunker and Bobby Joe, Viva Bobby Joe and all that. He doesn't see one thing. He's dead to the world. He's dead to the world. He's completely dead. No, nothing they said to him, he, he heard nothing. But that same man hears from God. He's disconnected to the world, but he's connected to God. Amen. So the fundamental reason for our believing in life after death are the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The unambiguous declaration that man has, glory to that man has made, has, man has made, oh praise God, for eternity and will live forever in, in heaven or in hell. So a man will ex experience life. It's glory to God. If he doesn't, he, he, in fact, he lives in some way, but he, he is fit for heaven or is fit for, for hell. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I wish if I have somebody, glory Amen. to God. Many pronounced clinically dead have been revived and told their stories. But the resurrection of Jesus Christ is what our faith is based on he because Paul said because he is resurrected oh praise be to God hallelujah thank you Jesus because he's resurrected we also have that faith amen, amen. glory to God amen. I'm looking for a passage of scripture I think it's in the last part of Acts chapter 4 if I'm not mistaken praise be to God Thank you, Jesus. Oh, praise be to God. <coughs> Is it blue? It's, uh, probably, uh, fine. He was delivered up for our offenses and he was rose for our justification. The believers actually live, praise God. The believers actually live in Christ. And how confident are we of Christ and our resurrection? I, we are, the Christian is confident for sure the Christian is sure, he is sure. I, when I, anyone asks me the question, I, I know for sure. And if the situation arises, I will use scripture, I will use scientific information and justify and declare. But what if someone who is well learned decide to refute the doctrine of the resurrection? Bishop Jenkins did it. Many people, many pastors who once taught believe hotly in the gospel have now turned 
their backs said they don't believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. But Christ's resurrection is the best established fact of antiquity, of the ages. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. Many say there are no evidence to support it. Mm -hmm. uh, that view, that view they say represents many. But believers, I want you to know, not because a person disbelieves in something. They may have all the knowledge that they can read the starry skies. They can pierce through the rocks and give you answers. They can excavate and give you, tell you about ancient things. They can even tell you how, how many years the earth has been there. Believe you me, they do not. They cannot refute truth. Hallelujah. There are people who believe that there is no resurrection when they're talking to you and they have objection. They have never examined the evidence. Mm -hmm. How can you explain um, a person who lived a prolific life, a bad life, a terrible life, life of debauchery, drunkenness, robbery, and all sorts, sexual perversion, and the they hear the gospel. Nobody push anything that down their throat. Mm -hmm. And they got to go to the altar. They can't even explain why they went. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, they are living totally different. It's like they've changed their life diametrically. They're going diametrically opposite to where they were going. Amen. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So someone will say, I don't believe in Jesus' resurrection. But both the enemies of the church have recognized that Jesus' resurrection is, 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 is a part, integral part. It's a substratum, the, the basis of the Christian faith. And if Christ has not been risen from the dead, Paul said, our preaching is vain. Then how confident are we? of Christ, uh, of Christ, of our resurrection, and of Christ's resurrection. I am sure, praise God. When I bury someone, I know for sure, I have no doubt in my mind that one day, praise God. Can I ask you to turn your Bibles to um, John chapter 5. Praise the Lord. Verse 29. I know for sure that one day, Jesus will call that person back from the grave. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. What did I say again? John 5, John 5 verse 29. 29. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Anyone 29. find it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Verse 29. Yeah. yeah. John 5, 29. Yeah. Read it. Yes, please. And shall come forth. Ver they take the verse before that. Oh, right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very 25. 25? Yeah. Okay. 25. Start, start from 25. Yeah. John 5, 25. Verily, verily, I say unto you, mm -hmm. the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. Amen. For as the Father, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. Verse 28. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in the which all that are take in the time, days, Take your time. In the which what? All. All? I mean, all, all. All. That are in the graves shall hear his voice. All that are in the graves, plural, shall hear his voice. And what shall happen? And shall come forth mm -hmm. they that have done good. Mm -hmm. Unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil, unto the resurrection of damnation. Okay, thank you very much. Notice, they shall come forth, all of them shall come forth. Now, when I'm talking to a person, I want to show them that not because you don't believe in something, that does not mitigate or change, alter yeah. what you disbelieve. Mm -hmm. You're probably speaking, I say, is it possible you don't want to insult a person? You want to ask, is it possible that you are speaking out of ignorance? 
Is it possible that you are speaking out of ignorance? Before the, the, you met me, I existed. I existed. Thousands of other people met me, but you have never met me. And you could argue that no, there is no such person. But when, the men, when you meet up with me, or I meet up with you, I cannot argue against that. So can the person be arguing out of, out of ignorance? What did Jesus and the Bible say about his resurrection? John 11, verses 24 and 20 to 26. And this is where all of us Christians, we need, because the reason why we are not able to answer people is because we have not studied the word. Anyone remember what um, Paul wrote to Timothy when he said, study to show yourself, yourself approved unto God, unto God, a workman, a workman that, come on now, you're not speaking. A workman that need not, not to be ashamed. Be ashamed. Amen. Mm -hmm. Martha and Mary. Remember Martha went to see Jesus and the reason why she went <clears throat> was because he had not turned up at her brother's um, sickness and death. Martha was anxious and rightly so because Martha just deal with life on earth. Jesus was not bothered because the Bible said have you not read it? The, the Sadducees did not believe in the resurrection, but the Pharisees did. And when the Sadducees put the question to Jesus, um, there were seven. There were seven brothers. Mm -hmm. The first brother, the older one, married this woman, and uh, he he died. The the second one married the brother, the woman, and she he died. The third one, and s consequently, all of them subsequently, all of them married the woman and. And they all died. What a strong woman that was. And uh, <laughs> praise be to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> praise God. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Bless that woman. soul. Praise be to God. They all died. And the, the Sadducees tried to catch up Jesus and said, In the resurrection, which one of them is going to have it? Jesus said to her, in the re in, in, You do hear because you don't know the scripture. You need partnership and all of that here on earth. In there, the angels neither live, they don't, they don't die. So they don't need resurrection. There will be no, the, 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 the basis on which we live in glory will be totally different. Yeah. And he said, have you not read that God is God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? He's yeah. not the God of the dead. Yeah. He's the no, God of the living. living. No man died to God. Yeah. You cannot die. If you have a glass of water and you have a lot of particles in it, if the water um, dries out, the particles sometimes catch on the wall mm -hmm. of the glass. Mm -hmm. The reason is it's out, the environment is dried out, changed, altered. Mm -hmm. But if you put water back in, that, um, those particles begin to come alive again. Mm -hmm. The problem is when life comes out of us, we are in a different situation. You, you understand me? We are not operating, reacting, or responding to the environment in which life usually responds. So Jesus was approached by Martha. And the first thing she said, Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Believers, we have to die sometime. La Jesus, Lazarus came back with his grave clothes. And Jesus said, loose him and let him go. Jesus didn't. I said Lazarus, right? Yeah. He came back with his grave clothes. Mm -hmm. Why? Because he needed it again. Mm -hmm. Where did Jesus, did he come back with his grave clothes? No. 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 Folded folded neatly. Neatly. They were folded neatly. Yes. Because right. he didn't need it again. Mm -hmm. no, Jesus told them to lose Lazarus. Nobody told anyone to lose Jesus. Mm -hmm. Come on. So Jesus said to Mary, to Martha, Mary, Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth on me, though he were dead, praise God, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Mary said, Martha said, Lord, Lord I know he shall rise again on the last day. But when Jesus went to the grave, come on now, you're listening to me. When Jesus went to the grave, he said, Lazarus, come forth. He called him by name. Yeah. And 
And the dead heard his voice. And the dead heard his voice. Hence we read in St. John, all that are in the grave shall hear his voice. Jesus called Lazarus. He didn't call everybody. Lazarus came forth. There were other people in that area, region. Had he called them, they would have come. So Jesus is the resurrection and the life. Amen. Hallelujah. In Acts chapter 1, 21, to 20, 21 and 22. This is what they said. Peter, which of these men which have accompanied with us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out amongst us, beginning from the baptism of John unto that same day that he was taken up from us, must one be ordained to be witnesses with us of his resurrection. They were witnesses of his witnesses of his resurrection. And they wanted to know which one of the guys now they should, because... Um, my guy there, um, Tom, Judas, had betrayed Jesus. He had died. And they wanted 12. They wanted to make up the 12. They said, which one? We need one of these to be ordained. As, because they were witnesses of the resurrection. The scripture I read in, say, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, where uh, Paul wrote, he said, he was seen of Cephas. He was seen of the, of the, of the 12. Then he was seen of above 500 brethren at one time. They saw Jesus. Amen. So I'm not bothered because a little person come and tell me who's going to die anyway. They may know science, but they don't know um, anything about theology. Do we really believe in the resurrection? What if somebody come and object? I must have something to say to them. A few people have art, art, artedly put forward the idea that Jesus did not actually die on the cross. They argued that perhaps he was then put into the tomb where he later revived and came out again, causing his disciples to mistakenly imagine that he had been, he had risen from the dead. That's so preposterous. However, this theory is plainly impossible for many reasons. The Romans knew how to execute people. They did not get it wrong. They've been doing it for a long time. Amen. They sold his, his coat. They would, it would not have been that, um, um, what do you call it now, e expensive if he was still alive. Glory to God. Marilyn Monroe's um, dress can fetch a million pounds. Princess Diana coat can, um, um, can fetch a million pounds. It doesn't worth it. But it, because she's dead. And a few years from now, somebody will pay a, an extra million for it. Glory to God. So these guys have been killing people for a long time. The Christian faith is the only evidence Evidential and historical religion in the world that talked about the resurrection. Muhammad is dead, buried. Confucius dead, buried. All of them, they're dead and buried. You can find their tomb. You can go to their tomb and see their body, bodies. But you cannot find Jesus' body at his tomb. What do you find when you go there? I wish if I have somebody to work with me. Praise be to God. The Bible never calls us to a blind faith, but to a faith that has evidence. The Bible said, many infallible proof. Let's look at Acts, please. Chapter 1. Praise God. Hallelujah. The former treatise, uh, verse 1, have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus begun both to do and teach, until the day in which he was taken up, after that he threw the Holy Ghost that given commandment unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom he also showed himself alive, to whom he also showed himself alive, after his passion, passion after his death, by many infallible proof. Anyone know what the word infallible means? Hmm? Oh, it's evidence that cannot be disputed. Evidence that cannot be disputed. Yeah. Praise God. Cannot be altered. Yeah. 
It's there. Praise God. So, Timothy, um, this was written by Luke. Did you know that? Yeah. Okay. okay. But if you look in the, Luke chapter 1, praise God. Let me see if this Luke 1 I need. Praise God. Paul, Luke wrote, for as many as a verse 1, 1, 1. Mm -hmm. For as many, as much, for, for as much, yeah, thank you. Uh, as may, for as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of the things which are most surely believe among us, even as they believe them, as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. It seemed good to me also, having a perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write unto thee in order most excellent Theophilus. Amen. That thou might, mightest what? No. Thou, that thou mightest no. know how. The certainty, the certainty of the thing things which thou hast been instructed. And in Acts 1, he says, the former treatise, the former letter, mm -hmm. I have written, I have made, O Theophilus, mm -hmm. all that Jesus begun both to do and teach until the day he was taken up after that, he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom he showed himself alive mm -hmm. after his passion by which by many infallible proof, mm -hmm. being seen of them for what? Forty days. Forty days. And he speak, yeah. spoke to them of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Oh, wow. Hallelujah. Okay. Hallelujah. It's Amen. many infallible proof. <laughs> Now, when a man never, you, uh, uh, we don't know physics, right? Because I have books on physics, but I don't read it because it's not my thing. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, I have a, cal I used to have a calculator. And my first calculator is one and two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then I went to W. H. Smith once and I see this calculator. I saw this calculator and it does, it just have one, two, but it has Z, it has Y. I said, what is this? <laughs> I said, is this a calculator or something? Yeah. Yeah. And I, that's the thing. The kids are X, Y. And, no, no. I just know one, two, three. So I don't buy that type of cal. I bought it once. I had it for a showpiece. When my children, my children grew up, I gave it to them. I went back to the one, two, three, four, um, uh, minus multiplicate yeah. minus multiplication yeah. addition yeah. And, yeah. And, and, yes that same one <laughs> praise God yeah. are the proofs are these proofs able to stand up to the light of criticism it can glory to God the, 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 it can stand up Dr. Simon Greenleaf royal professor of law at Harvard declared by the chief justice of the supreme court he later turned glory to god to sift through the evidence of the christian resurrection and after examining each thread of evidence read the resur christ resurrection he said that in many in he said that in any bias courtroom in the world if the evidence for christ's resurrection were presented it would be adjudged to be an absolute historical fact. I want to read that, that again. After examining such a learned man, after examining each thread of evidence, read the resurrection, Christ resurrection, he said that in any biased courtroom in the world, if the evidence, the person is biased, even if they were biased, the evidence of Christ's resurrection were presented, it would be adjudged to be an absolutely historical fact. In a court of law, believers, a person don't necessarily get off, even if they have 12 jury, because they are not guilty, get, because they are not guilty. Mm -hmm. They can be guilty and still get off. Yeah. It's, the, uh, it's the ability of the barrister, the, the defense barrister, to present mm -hmm. an argument. Mm -hmm. And when some barrister speak, their mouth Sweet, like it's it's good. It flows like um, hot knife cutting butter. 
that you have to believe them. Because they're coming with facts. If Christ did not rise from the dead, Christianity would be an interesting museum, said someone. The Christian martyrs who went to the lion's den singing and the, contemplate, uh, con on, and the contemporaries who lived and give their lives in Ecuador. You remember um, the, 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 the book Through Gates of Splendor? Native saints, Jim Elliot and all of them. The, Jim Elliot was the one who said, a man is no fool when he give that which he cannot keep, that he may gain that which he cannot lose. That, that those who lived and gave their lives in Ecuador, etc., would have been highly deluded. They weren't deluded. They were educated men. If Christ did not rise from the dead, Christianity would be an interesting museum. Glory to God. Frank Morris, 1937, decided to do the world a favor to expo expose the fraud of Jesus' resurrection and the Bible. And superstition of the resurrection, he felt that the Bible did not meet the stiff criteria in a court of law. In his book, Who Moved the Stone? The Stone. A remarkable thing happened while doing his research. It wasn't as easy as he thought. The first chapter of his book, the book that refused to be written, he, 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 he said... This, the resurrection is worldwide in scope. The resurrection is worldwide in scope. And Paul Little, in his book, Evidence That Demands a Verdict, I, I quote it many times, and I remember speaking to a, a rich man. He, I think he was Jewish. And uh, he saw me buying my stationery. And uh, in St. Paul's, we don't buy stationery. Janet, he asked me one day after I came back every like Easter and December and I buy stationery for the guys in um, Yugoslavia, Spain, and myself. And he asked me, what was I doing with it? And that man started to question me because I told him I go to a school. Uh, I said, what are you studying? I said, uh, theology. And he started to talk to me about Darwin and all of that. And the man argued and told me all sorts of things. And I, I quoted Paul Little. Look, I said, sir, I, I've just read this. Oh, praise God. I saw it so intelligent that day. Glory to God. I, oh, my God. Even now, I'm looking back. I sounded it so intelligent that day. I, I said to him, sir, if a man, if I come to you with a head on my ears and on my toe, and I'm shouting, hallelujah, it's wonderful. You must say I'm an idiot. The problem is if you see another guy. With the same head and, it, and his ears and on his toe. And he's shouting hallelujah. It's wonderful. It's sweet. You have to ask the question. Have they met? If they have not met and they have not collaborated. You, 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 whilst you thought the first one was an idiot. You get a second idiot. But there's a problem. The second idiot and the first idiot have never met. What if you find another one in Germany? And uh, they find the, the same a uh, head on his ears and on his toes and he's shouting, Hallelujah! Glory to God! It's sweet! He said, Oh my God, some crap patches there in the, in the world. But if you go to Spain and you find another, yeah. 20, Madrid, um, Barcelona, and all them places, and you find another, you have to ask the question, if they have not met it, they have not collaborated, you have a problem. Not them. Mm. You have a problem, not them. They have an experience that you lack. That's a problem. And you have to find out. If they have not met and they have not collaborated, what is the object of their faith? And if the, the, the object of their faith must be the same. When you look in Russia, people would give their lives for a Bible. I remember when my, the guy who is now overseer of Ethiopia, of, of Ethiopia, Church of God, Harvest Church of God in Ethiopia. I remember when he went to Germany, to um, um, Russia. He came back. He said when they, when they saw him with a whole Bible, they were touching the Bible and they were crying. Wow. Living eye water. Not crocodile tears. They were bawling because the guy had a whole Bible, Matthew to Revelation. 
People were um, taking Bible and turning and twisting them up like rope. And everybody get a leaf. And doing it. In China, in, 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 in um, Afghanistan, in, in Iran, in, in Iraq, in all those places. Mongolia. Glory to God. There are people who would give this, they give their lives. One of the guys that was from Hungary. Um, um, uh, no, what do you call that place? Hungary. Hungary, yeah. Hungary. No, um, no, you're hungry. Hungary. Yeah. Hungary. Praise God. <laughs> Brother Jim, you said it like you're hungry. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory <laughs> to God. <laughs> Amen. He, he, showed, he, he brought a video to Germany and showed us. When they wanted to baptize somebody, they have to hide and go in the, water, the river. And you see the policeman with the dog coming and biting the people. What now? Why would people do that if they don't believe? Glory to God. Why would they do that if they don't believe? You have to have a faith. You have to be convinced. The resurrection, he said, Frank Morris, said, the world is, is worldwide in scope. It can be traced back to Palestine, A.D. 32. The early church constantly referred to it as the basis of the teaching, living, and teaching. Amen. Mm -hmm. Sunday worship, Resurrection Day, be traced back to A.D. 32. Such calendar shift was monumental. Only something as great as Jesus' resurrection to do it. Now the cross... Glory to God. Jesus' resurrection, even now, we talk about 2021, AD 2021, in the year of our Lord, before it was BC. Jesus stretched his hand between BC and AD. And how many millions? Glory to God. Nobody read Shakespeare now, do they? Have you ever heard any school talking about Shakespeare? No! One time, 40, 50 years ago, uh, say 100 years ago, you have to study Shakespeare. Voltaire, you have to know about them. Now they are forgotten. Glory to God. Come on. You see, we don't realize what we have. Number six, independent testimony in the New Testament, such as Paul. They have numbers... Number five, rather. Number six, the empty tomb and the appearance of the reported Christ. Seven, the earliest explanation of, in Matthew 28, 11, 15, 28, uh, 11 to 15, this side, the disciples stole, stole his body. That Matthew didn't even bother to refute. Ma Matthew did not even to argue. It would mean, believers, that the disciples, glory to God, it would mean that the disciples, Glory to God. Let me just. No judge would listen to listen to it, to you if you tell him while you slept the disciples stole your body. Which that's what the Bible said. They, they, they persuaded the people, gave them money, and tell them that they said we will secure you. Because if you were put in charge of anyone to watch over them, and the person the prisoner get away, you would die. You would die. That's why when Paul was in the prison in Philippi and the jailer, when the earthquake, the jailer was about to kill himself. And Paul said, do yourself no harm. We are all here. When Peter was put in jail and, and they, 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 they couldn't find him, they, they couldn't find him. They killed the people who were put in charge of him. Come on. Now, no judge would listen to you if you tell him while the disciples slept. While he slept, the disciples told the prisoner, the, um, the pri not the prisoners, the, um, the guards slept. The disciples stole his body. It would mean that the disciples were perpetrators of a deliberate lie which was responsible for the ultimate death of many believers. We don't. We don't believe Jesus' resurrection because somebody tells us so. There are millions of people who believe in God, believe in the Bible, but they are not Christians. A Christian person is one who have met with Jesus Christ for themselves. themselves. 
A Christian is not a person who believes the Bible. James asked, dost thou believe in God? He said, you do well. But the devil also believes and tremble. That's why you can cast out a demon. Oh, praise be to God. You can only cast a demon out in the name of Jesus. The devil believe and tremble. A devil see you and you, you start worshiping. If you start, if you start to worship, worship, worship in a church. Glory to God. If you start worship, no matter how bad a devil is, and he lie down there dormant, he's not saying anything, watching, watching, watching. When the presence of God hit him, yes. he cry out. Yes. Ah! Uh, those of you who are watching, I'm not trying to frighten you. It would mean that there would be the disciples would have been perpetrators of a deliberate lie which was responsible for the ultimate death of many believers. Each of them faced martyrdom and torture for their belief. The same disciples that they are saying lie, Peter was crucified upside down. Paul's dead, it was chopped off. Glory to God. Um, is it Bartol? One of them was in Africa. John, John, the, John the, the revelator. John was put on the Isle of Patmos for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Praise be to God. Put in oil, burn in oil. Now, why would a person, if, if I believe a lie and I'm going to the gallows? No, sir. I say no, no, I'm, I was only joking. It was, you know, I was just joining them. In Acts 4, they whipped Peter and John as they tried to persuade their silence. But what did they say? They said in Acts chapter 4, anyone remember? Praise God. They said, Lord, of a truth, the kings of the earth have gathered together against your son, Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Well, the Bible said in verse 13, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men. They marveled and they took knowledge of them. That they had been with Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you Lord. But. When they. Verse 24. After they let them go in verse 23. They went to their own company. And reported all that the chief priests and elders had said unto them. And when they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God, which hast made heaven and earth and the sea and all that in them is, who by the mouth of thy servant David hast said, why did the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? The kings of the earth stood up and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For of a truth against the holy child, thy holy child Jesus, which thou hast anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, and the gent with the Gentiles, and the people of Israel were gathered together to deliver, to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. Now Jesus' death, if some may some see it was the Romans and Pilate and Herod, no, it's here it said, glory to God, to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determine before to be done. Now, Lord, behold their threatenings. Grant to your servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word. Stretch forth your hands to heal. They weren't praying to escape. They were praying for boldness that they would preach the word. That you would stretch forth your hand to heal. That signs and wonders would be done in the name of Jesus. They whipped and tried the, the disciples and tried to persuade them into silence. Praise God. It would mean hallelujah. That had the critics found the body, they what would they have done? If they had found the body, they could have brought it and said, Here, if they said they've stolen the body. And hit it. My God, there would have been a search. One million dollars to find Jesus. Amen. A million dollars to find Jesus. Anyone found him? 
Are you remember I told her coming in? Anybody remember I told her coming in? I'm the only person here who remember yeah. I told her coming in. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm the only person, right? You remember when uh, Solomon Rushdie wrote the book oh, Satanic the Verses? verses. Yeah. And uh, he, he, he became big overnight. Mm -hmm. Solomon Rushdie was in his bow tie and his, um, what you call that, black suit, his tuxedo, tuxedo. Uh, interviewed on TV. Satanic verses. Oh I, I told her, I told her, come in here, just go on TV and said, I pay four million <laughs> for anybody to kill him. Four million. God Almighty. That man went into hiding. Now, a Christian don't go into hiding. What they do, they pray for bonus. They said, grant to your servant, they said, of a truth. Can you hear me? Of a truth, they have gathered together against the, thy holy child, Jesus. Hallelujah. For of a truth against thy holy child, Jesus, whom thou hast anointed, both Herod and Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel, were gathered together. For to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determine before to be done. Now, Lord, behold their threatenings. Behold their threatenings. Grant to your servant that with all boldness they may speak your word. Stretch forth your hands. The Christian don't hide. Now I know these days that a fear has gripped the land. That some of us are hiding. Glory to God. Hallelujah. A Christian don't hide. Praise God. A Christian don't hide. Somebody hear me. A Christian don't hide. We don't hide from the devil. We don't hide from Satan. We don't hide from prosecutors. Amen. Glory to God. Now, the appearance of Christ is a proof that he was resurrected. In the garden near the tomb, Matthew 28, Mary and Martha, Mary rather, saw him. The two men on the Emmaus Road, Luke 24, 13 to 34, saw him. Some men in Galilee, John 21, 2 to 7, saw him. Some in Galilee saw him. About 500 people at one particular time saw Jesus after he was resurrected. And Paul saw him. What a wonderful thing that we don't have to be ashamed. What if a learned person come to tell us that Jesus was not resurrected, learn conjuring chick tricks? Boss man, that's your opinion. That's your opinion. Ev the evidence is against you. We have to know it and say the evidence is against you. Because what you're saying doesn't stack up. When, I remember and I told the story before how in Nottingham we were doing street meeting. So I gave the young people, not street meeting, just going out witnessing. I gave the young people the tracks and they went forward. They were going two by two. I stayed behind and I locked the door. I would find, I, we have um, people who were um, enough, big enough. To, to be with a child. You understand? I'm looking for a word. Um, mature. mature to stay with a child. And so I stayed behind to lock the door. I went back for something. And I saw this man coming up on the road. And I said, Sir, would you like a track? Would you like a track? The man said, No. I said, Sir, that's the best thing somebody has ever given to you. I said, That's the best thing. You, you mean to tell me you rejected, you rejected the track? He said he don't believe in them things. I said, how comes? He's a scientist. And he was telling me he was from New Zealand or Australia, one of them. He's doing research here in the, one of the universities in Nottingham. And when I started to, I said to him, sir, you deal with evidence. Science is about facts, right? He said, yes. And science don't deal with anything that is not fact. Yeah, he said, yes. I said, would you say then that would you agree with me that the thousands of people in our world that have accepted Jesus Christ all over 
film stars, pop stars, boxers, footballers. Would you believe, would you agree with me that the, the object of their faith is Jesus? Would you agree with me that the people, and I said to him, we have a, a power station not far from here. And I, he, he knew where it was. I said, would you agree with me that you would find a cluster of cancer around that area because of the power station? He said, yes. And I said, would you say that's facts? You don't need to see the research. You would know. Would you agree with me that if there's a telephone mask in an area that it's dangerous for the people that live there? You'll find them with cancer, certain type of cancer. He said, yes. I said, then why can't you believe that all the people that has been changed, whose lives have been turned around? It's facts. It's facts. You cannot argue against it. Oh, glory to God. That man didn't want to talk to me anymore. He said he was going to meet his friends, the science, group of scientists at the pub. I said, can I come? <laughs> no. I said, so I started to walk with him. And he was becoming incensed. I said, I'll come with you, man. You know, I'd like to meet your friends. Talk with you. And he said no. And he was adamant. He, he, he did not want me there. I said, remember, we all deal with facts. You're a scientist. You don't run from facts. And my God, and that night was me and him. And I walked him to the pub door. And I bid him, I didn't bid him farewell. I just bid him goodbye. Praise be to God. I, I bid him goodbye. Thank you, Jesus. Believers, what we believe is it can stand. That's why we don't need our doubt is a problem. We doubt ourselves, but not God. God's ability, praise God, is, is, is so powerful. God's ability is so powerful. Amen. We believe in God. We believe in the resurrection. Praise God. And that I want, you see a lot of Christians, we, the disciples um, are people who are trained. Jesus trained disciples. Did you hear what I said? Mm -hmm. Jesus trained disciples. Christians need to be trained. Christians need to be trained. Um, when we left and went to Bible school, we, I had to give up my job. I gave up my job. Um, I would want to buy a house. I would have wanted to. Those days, houses were cheap, Brother Jim. Mm -hmm. The same when you buy a car, almost you pay for a car. You could get a, a, a good car. You could get a house mm -hmm. if you were sensible. Mm -hmm. You know, you could buy a, a, a four-bedroom house for a prop under a thousand pounds at the time. Mm -hmm. I paid 600 pounds for my first car. Suit up. Austin Cooper. Finn Weber. Straight through exhaust. Give gear change, dial, you look all over the dashboard, it's, it's like a panorama of gadgets. Wow. And uh, I could have bought the house, the, the house I lived in, this fourth floor. I could have rented it out had I known and somebody advised me. And rent room because the landlord rents room and the, the ground floor. You know, somebody else has a flat top, top and a flat. And I could have rented it out and it paid for my car. I gave up my job. I gave up all of that opportunity and prospect. I went because souls was my currency. Glory to God. Amen. I want to be trained. I want to be, I want to be able to reach somebody. Because I think it's the best thing. You have to be equipped. You, cannot, you, uh, you, you have to be equipped to, to fly an airplane. You have to do so many licenses to to before you can fly a little helicopter on your own. Yeah? You have to be, and even now, if you drive a car, if you pass your tests, you cannot sit with another learner driver. You have to be a certain time. Am I talking? Yeah. yeah, yeah. If, if, if it's not true, please don't write in or say anything. Yeah. Glory to God. You have to know. You have to have experience. You have to be driving for a certain amount of time because that's how things are. Now, why shouldn't the Christians train? And that's why God has never called us to be Christians. He called us to be disciples. Yes. And he didn't send us to make Christians. He sent us to make disciples. 
and the Cyprus our people are trained. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, my fellow men, I want to say to you, it's important, there's no cheap way of being trained. The people in the Soviet Union and China, in Russia, in Angolia, uh, they in um, it's Iran, Afghanistan, they would die for an opportunity like this. Amen. Glory to God. We don't put the teaching and the television together. And I'm not saying if you don't do it, don't say that I'm troubling you. There are people who do it. We are here to learn. Amen. We are here because we're in a, our, our mission is a serious one. The, to fly a plane, it's a serious thing. You have to learn how to handle it situations wind you have to learn how to land a plane land a plane when uh, when the wind adverse wind you have to learn how to do that they practice it with an assimilator mm -hmm. they put the plane on a rigorous test to um, powerful wind hit it to see if it would crack we need to be trained you're denying yourself. Wherever you are, find a, a church that disciple you and go to the training. You want to be a soul winner. Study to show yourself approved. Let's stand together. Hallelujah. Unto God. Not unto man. Study to show yourself approved. Not unto man, but unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly divided, the word of truth. I have come a long way. And it's because I've learned to discipline myself. Most morning, five o'clock. I don't promise anybody that any other part of the day I will read the Bible. But most morning, five o'clock, I'm reading this book. When I go downstairs, it's everything I read, it mostly has to do with the Bible. But to sit down and read my Bible, it's a discipline. Yeah. As soon as I finish from Mark, Matthew to Re Genesis to Revelation, I start again. It's a discipline. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So, Father, we want to thank you tonight for the Holy Spirit that you have given to us. We thank you for the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the most powerful thing. Glory to God happen on earth that death could not hold Jesus Christ the grave could not hold him that David wrote I foresaw the Lord always before me he was at my right hand that I should not be he, 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 he shall not suffer his only one to see corruption the grave could not hold him death could not hold him the cross Lord, we praise you this moment that the most powerful event ever on earth is, Lord, when you laid the sins, our sins on Christ, and you have loosed him, he died for it, and you have loosed him from the bands of it, that the whole world shook. Praise God. Darkness covered the land. Lord, the sixth hour, Jesus cried, and we praise you, O oh God. Some thought it was thunder. Mm. Hallelujah. The sun turned off its light. Glory to God. The earth went into convulsion because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We praise you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That the call of his voice called, caused Mary to turn who saw him before and did not recognize him. When she heard his voice to so say, Rab and I, glory to God. Father, cause us to shout, Rab and I, Rab and I, to come to learn from you. Father, to study, to show ourselves approved unto you. Amen. Not unto the pastor, not unto the bishop, not unto the teacher. But a workman knows how to rightly divide the word. Thank you for those that are here. Thank you for those that are listening out there. 
thank you for those who would be picking up this thing a few days after, whether it's on Facebook or on YouTube. Lord, I thank you and I bless you right now. I give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Anyone be led to pray? Thank you, Jesus. Holy Akasatalama. Shandara Kabakoshi. Glory to God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. And the Lord give you peace. Now until Jesus come. Great having you tonight. You're in the hearing. You want to join us? We are GL2 Golf Lima 2. No, that's my, that's somebody else's address. GL1 Golf Lima 1. 5, A for Alpha or Apple, and H for Hotel. GL1 5AH. That's the address of the church, and it's 89 Stroud Road. Okay, God bless you. Great having you.